Hi, I'm Brad Grover. I work for Hoppy Nursery in Union, Illinois, and we're a grower of perennial quality perennials. Uh, it's all garden plants that you can uh, purchase at your local independent retail garden center in this area. I'm here today to talk a little bit about uh, amending your soil to improve conditions to have a good garden, um, particularly for perennial plants. The, uh, there's, there's several reasons that you want to amend soil. Um, one is to improve the permeability of the moisture, so the moisture will get down into the root zone of the plants, um, as well as retain moisture so it doesn't dry out too quickly or stay wet for too long. Uh, you also want to improve the nutrient holding capacity of the soil. Um, you want to improve the air movement in and out of the soil so you can get oxygen to the root zone, as well as increasing the biological activity in the soil, uh, which includes different kinds of insects, worms, um, different bacterias in the soil and so on. Um, the one thing that you need to think about before you get started is what type of soil you have. There's four basic types of soil, um, which is sand, loam, silt, and clay. Sand tends to be the coarsest soil, and if you pick that up and crumble it, uh, it'll just crumble apart and fall, um, and has the least capacity to hold moisture, the moisture just kind of drains right through it and it dries out very quickly. Loam tends to be the best type of soil. Uh, it's got more of the desirable qualities that you're looking for. It will retain some moisture, retains uh, nutrients in the soil a little bit better. It uh, doesn't get waterlogged as a general rule and uh, just is a much better quality soil type for growing plants. The other two types, uh, silt and clay, are similar. Um, silt just tends to have a little bit bigger particles, but has a lot of the same qualities as clay. Clay is probably the worst soil to have to work with in a garden. It's very fine particles, that compact together, very tight um, soil condition, and the main problems with it are with the moisture and air movement in the soil. Uh, as far as the moisture, when it gets dry, it gets very hard and compact. It's hard to get a shovel into, which also makes it very difficult for the root system to establish in the clay soil. Um, to the other end of that, if it gets very wet, it stays saturated for a long period of time. You pick up a wet piece of clay and squeeze it in your hand, and it just stays in a tight, compact ball. It won't crumble, won't fall apart. And that tends to um, lead to plants being waterlogged, the root system getting too wet, and you can have root rots and several different problems with the clay soil. Um, there's um, several different types of things that you can use as soil amendments. Um, there's a, several different things that you would consider organic um, additives to the soil. Probably the main one of those being some type of compost, whether it's uh, yard waste compost, composted manure, um, straw, leaves, grass, there's any number of different things that you can compost. You can do it in your own garden to um, get the compost that you need, or there's a lot of the landfills around that are doing um, yard waste composting uh, that has compost readily available for purchase. You also can buy it bagged at many of the local garden centers. Um, you also can just use um, you know, the, the clippings, grass clippings, anything that you happen to have, leaves, if it's not well composted, it's something that you want to do ahead of time and work into the soil and just let it decay in the soil. Um, the other things that you can use as far as organic is peat moss, sphagnum peat, those types of things. Anything that's uh, a, originally a living, growing thing, you can put into that uh, soil to build up the organic content. There's also some additives that you can use to help loosen up soil, particularly clay soil, uh, that are inorganic. And that would include things like sand, peak, or excuse me, uh, sand, perlite, vermiculite, those types of things. And those will just add a larger particle to the soil and help break that up. Um, I'm going to go through a little bit as far as what you need to do with each type of soil uh, to improve it, to get it the best uh, soil type that you can have. On sand, we had mentioned that that's very loose, very coarse, and doesn't retain much moisture. So you want to add a good amount of uh, organic compost to that, probably at least 50%. And that will help improve the moisture retention uh, so that it doesn't dry out so quickly, so that the water doesn't run right through it. 
Sand also has virtually no capacity of holding nutrients, and the organic content in that will help considerably with that. Um, loam, you really, there's, there's little that you have to do with that. It's still a good idea to add some compost of some type to it just to help improve that a little bit. But again, as I mentioned before, that's the best type of soil you can hope to have. Um, silt and clay, you treat basically the same. You maybe just use a little more of the compost with the clay than you would with the silt. But again, you want to go about 50% um, of organic compost of, of whatever type you choose. And with the clay, I would definitely add something else to help break it up. Something with larger particles, the sand, vermiculite, perlite, something like that. Because um, you want to loosen that up so that the moisture will get into it, the air movement will get into it, and that will also greatly improve the biological activity in a clay soil. Um, once you've uh, decided what you're going to do, what type of soil you have, what uh, compost or what type of uh, amendment you're going to use, you want to get all those supplies, get everything ready, and uh, what you want to try to accomplish is to get this tilled into about the top 12 inches of the soil. Um, so you're going to put a 3 to 6 inch layer initially over the, the soil that you have. Uh, ideally, a rototiller works fine. If you don't have a rototiller to work this soil up, you can use something like this, a, a potato fork or a pitchfork. Uh, a shovel works fine, and you'll just want to go through and start turning the soil. And you just dig a line, um, kind of make a trench there, and then right next to that, you'll dig that and turn it back into the trench that you just dug. And you want to go through all of this two, three times to make sure as you're turning that, that you're getting it mixed evenly. So it's not big groups, big bunches of uh, compost and then the soil that you work with. You want it mixed very uniformly. Um, once you get that done, what you want to end up with is something that when you squeeze it, it'll hold together a little bit because of the moisture content but it's not going to make a ball and when you rub it in your fingers you can easily crumble it so it'll fall apart as what we've got here. Um, so this is the type of uh, soil condition you're looking for and this is, this is the best um, condition you can have for the moisture coming and going, the organic content in the soil, the biological activity, all those things that we talked about uh, is, is best in this type of loose soil condition. Once you get that done and all that's worked in to a depth of about 12 inches, you've got a nice loose soil that's ideal for the plants. But there's one other thing that you might want to consider, and that would be the pH of that soil, whether it's acidic or alkaline. And you can buy a pH test kit at the local garden center and do it yourself, or you can take a sample and send it in like, to the university. Uh, they'll have labs where they can do a lot of those types of testing or some of the farm farm co-ops or something like that. Um, most perennial plants will grow in a very neutral environment. Neutral is 7, a uh, pH of 7. And anything from about 6 to about 7.5 is where most perennials will grow. Some require a much lower pH, which is more acidic. Some require a much higher pH, which is more alkaline. Um, once you get those results back, uh, if you send it in, oftentimes they'll make recommendations of how to amend that with some of the change to pH. Um, if you don't send it in, just a general guideline is if your pH is very low, you want to add lime, and that will bring your pH up more to the neutral zone. And a, on a bag of lime, it'll give you an idea of how much you should add per 100 or per 1,000 square feet to change your pH. If your pH is very high, very alkaline, then you need to add something like uh, sulfur, ammonium sulfate, or something in that order. And again, just follow the instructions on the back. Um, that generally you'll want to do once you've got your amendments in the soil, because that is going to change the pH to a certain degree over what your existing soil did. Um, the other thing that uh, you need to think about is if you're trying to add plants to an existing bed. And it's very difficult to work the entire bed or turn all the soil like you would um, if you're in starting a brand new bed. But what you can do is dig your hole about twice as big around as the container that the plant's in, and then mix, as we had discussed, the amendment in the soil that you took out of the hole at about a 50% rate, and fill back in around uh, the container with that soil. And that will uh, 
um, act just as if you were mixing the whole bed. Um, the other thing you want to do that will help improve the, either an old bed or the new, the new bed that you've created is once you're finished planting, put a two to three inch layer of some type of organic mulch on it, whether it's a bark mulch or something else, as over time that will decay, improve the soil, it will work down into the soil, and we'll do all the same things that we've talked about as far as mixing into the soil. Um, I hope that this has been beneficial to you, and I hope you have a very good gardening experience.